Yay. Okay. We're being live streamed. Welcome back everyone. Happy Monday. It's been a Monday for sure. <laughs> I'm so happy that we have tribute talk tonight because it's been a day. Um, we have a, a little bit to talk about with Ballad because I mean, we're done shooting officially, which is really actually sad to talk sad. about. Oh. <laughs> um, and later we're going to be going over the first two chapters of part three of Mockingjay. So I don't know. Oh, so sad. Just- yeah, exactly. So it's just it's just a sad night. <laughs> but we're excited to be here, right? Oh, yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> That's all that matters. So where do we want to start with Ballad? I don't even remember because we missed last week for Halloween. Yeah, Happy it's Halloween, been two everyone. Weeks. Happy Halloween. Yeah. What a Which long we had weeks. a we had a fun <laughs> Halloween episode with Ronnie. So if you haven't listened or watched to that, you should check it out. Make sure to like and subscribe in the link yes. down below. Honestly, though, honestly, we're almost at 300 subs, so. Oh, dang, yes. Yay, yay us. Also, um, I finally started posting tribute talk episodes to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever. Yes. So, I have listen, been an avid, listen on there. I was an avid listener of both the uh ballad discussion and the mocking jay discussion and i skip over my parts because i hate hearing my voice but honestly i'm glad that you posted them <laughs> oh what? no your Stop. voice is great no every, <laughs> who doesn't hate their voice though yeah it's true uh, like, i've gotten honestly, used to mine same <laughs> after listening like, to it for so many hours i was about to say when y'all do the editing this. and stuff it's like yeah i'm sure you get used to it it is kind of hard though it's like nails on a chalkboard <laughs> really though it's like wait uh, i sound like that really like what and they're like you sound so dumb go back <laughs> <laughs> i wish i could change things <laughs> the ballad, the ballad. Yeah. what should we start I, with i think one of the big things was the caesar flickerman set i feel like it was a good place to start yeah, that was probably the coolest thing. I mean, we got another another TikTok, which I just want them to keep rolling in. They're so fun. They're so much fun. I, I think it's kind of genius marketing on their standpoint. Like, but the amount of comments, I know I said this in the group chat that I saw on that TikTok that was like, wait, there's another Hunger Games movie? I'm just like, Ugh. y'all. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah, I read through that I mean, comment section. It's it made very, me a little scared. It made me very scared, but I I mean, at least these people now know about it. And yeah. hopefully we'll be telling people. I think that once the first trailer hits, people are going to be like, oh, this is a thing that's happening. But and, uh, it's, uh, I just feel like it's kind of aware at this point that there's going to be another Hunger Games movie. I don't know. I, I feel like it is a little disheartening, though, too, the number of views that the TikToks have gotten. Like, I just don't feel like it's enough. I don't know. I, I, I just yeah. am, I know I feel the same way I'm still holding out until they release that first trailer whenever that'll be mm-hmm. probably next mm-hmm. year I think that'll probably get a lot more discussion and like engagement going but the fact that people are like oh I'm like what's what's going on here what there's another Hunger Games what's going on um it's weird but I, I mean I, I think that people still remember the series fondly so I'm just I'm just being positive, trying to be positive with this. Yeah, the, the whole TikTok thing is interesting. I mean, I I guess seeing like the comments on there being like, oh, I didn't even know there was anything new that was Hunger Games is a positive sign because it's like working to like you were saying, yeah, reach people. Sp- spread aware spread awareness to the Hunger Games Do you think to valid. TikTok is gonna be like a huge marketing strategy through release. One hundred percent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I was like, is it just kind of like for now until like the trailer comes out and then it'll move to more like traditional kind of marketing? Or but yeah, I don't know. Which, it's a whole new world. I, which I don't even know what would be traditional marketing nowadays. Cause like <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> back in the day, like I've said before, they would like have websites to like very specific things and like I have since the Twitter debacle, I have since migrated back to Tumblr, or at least trying to. I mean, they had the um, Capital Couture Tumblr because that was like the big thing at the time was that website. Yeah. 
Um, I, I don't see them doing anything really with that, with ballot. I kind of, there's really only a few ways that people really get out information now. And it's like YouTube, Twitter, maybe now, uh, who knows what'll happen with that. And like TikTok. And it's, it doesn't really get segmented to, segmented into like sites anymore. People don't go on. When was the last time you went onto like a designated website for something like that? I mean, it's movies don't do that anymore, unfortunately. Oh, what I would give. Yeah, I know. I would it's so different. Ballad. It's so weird how it's things so have changed weird. in such a short amount of time, like six, internet, seven years. The internet landscape is so interesting because it is just so quick like this. And I, I was thinking that the, like the other day, I was like, I cannot believe how much the landscape has changed. But like, this is just where we're at at this point and we're just going to have to deal with it, I guess. But I'm still hoping that they'll do like some create like more creative, like real world things, like how they did with mocking, or I mean, I guess with the whole series where they would like put billboards and stuff in like Los Angeles of like capital, like couture, like fashion stuff. I don't know if y'all remember that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Like, I, cause that now would get more engagement. if like people would post that online be like, oh, look at this cool billboard. Like what, what's this for? I could see them doing more real world engagement like that. I mean, hopefully this time we don't get a weird capital makeup line, which I'm, I'm <laughs> going to guess that we won't get with this one, hey. but still, it'll be interesting to see what they're doing with this. And now that we're in post-production, mm-hmm. it's like, now we wait, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. I would love to see them use smaller content creators to like somehow like <laughs> like sponsor them (laughs) (laughs) Uh, to get like the word out um I I I think like through TikTok and through that like that's the new medium that um their target demographic for this movie would be using and like that's how they interact on the internet so I would I wouldn't be surprised um if they do something like that I think that'd be a pretty smart move on their end I mean, do you all remember when they did, I think it was YouTube creators, and I believe it was Mockingjay Part 1, where they would have, like, propag- not propaganda videos, but they would have, like, capital videos of, like, famous mm-hmm. YouTubers being like, here's a capital, here's how you make a weird capital art piece, and, like, stuff like that, and it would have, like, minor, like, sign, like, you, there would be, like, a Mockingjay symbol in the background or something like that. Um, yeah. I could see them doing that with TikTok. With like smaller yeah, creators, like the, the mm-hmm. district voices videos. Yes, mm-hmm. that's what yes. it was called. Yeah. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of like the Adult Swim trend on TikTok. Wait, did we say that? I'm sorry, I zoned out for a second. No. <laughs> no. Nope. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> um, like uh, on TikTok, the Adult Swim trend for a while was like hiding the the Adult Swim logo with like a specific audio. Mm-hmm. Um they could easily adapt that they could honestly even use the same audio to make it funny even though that wasn't exactly like the tone but like um yeah like just hide a mockingjay pin somewhere in the in the video but would they use a mockingjay pin now though huh would they use a mockingjay pin now though like with ballad i feel like they would for the for the promotion yeah because it's like you got to people recognize that oh i don't know if they would use that for the promo though because it like i i it, i feel like they would at least just use the hunger games co- colon the battle of songbirds and snakes like a- as name recognition enough i don't know if they would do the pin i just don't think it makes but there's those people out there that think jennifer lawrence is going to be in this movie so i know <laughs> I feel like they have to appeal to, that's who their audience is unfortunately <laughs> But like, is that going to help us. that, or is that going to hurt that? I mean, it's no, going to help it. Sing the it's going to help it because it'd be like the same people who would be like, "Oh, there's a new Hunger Games movie." Like, even if Jennifer Lawrence isn't in it, like there is a new movie. It's like saying there's a new Harry Potter movie because there's a new Harry Potter movie. I feel like every day, <laughs> my life is a Harry Potter movie. <laughs> Not entirely true, but I'll let you off the hook because I know you're bitter <laughs> about Harry Potter. <laughs> 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 I'm like it's... literally on Etsy right now shopping for Draco pins. Hey, so... hey, hey, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just bitter about all the hunger or all the Harry Potter merch. There's no, too much. There's so much. They like go to Barnes and Noble 
every single time at Barnes and Noble, there's new stuff. I'm like, oh come on. No, it's a lot. <laughs> it they just have makes they me jealous. Open they opened up the Harry Potter <laughs> store. Jealous. They opened up the Harry Potter store in New York. I have yet yep. to go. Um but it looks insane day. oh my god it looks <laughs> insane. I was there opening day I waited eight hours my friend and I waited eight hours to get in it was super worth it I live two blocks away from that place so it's really dangerous but um I did love the store AJ took yeah me. I took Emily <laughs> um, oh my god em- come back to New York City oh my goodness <laughs> well I'll get a butterbeer and be cute and then Holly can be <laughs> mad <laughs> I'll be in the corner Which- <laughs> which we do we do have to we do have to preface we do not support the views of jk rowling on this podcast yes. um we, we just like the, Harry, the story harry potter um to be honest when, this is such a tangent i am so deep into like fanon that i forget about the canon like, <laughs> altogether i'm like wait what <laughs> wait who i get that <laughs> i get that when are they gonna open up a hunger Games store in new york they were going to never <laughs> they were going you gotta to go to it. Dubai. No <laughs> no, I know. No, they were going to open up a Lionsgate experience in Times Square and like have like a capital oh, section yeah. and everything. Ooh, and it, it just yes, and it just yeah. kind of died. <laughs> it just kind of died out. Yep. What? Just like I mean, the same... like touring concert thing. Yes, and also just died. Like, the, the, they freaking, hate the freaking London was it a musical or a stage play? I don't know if y'all saw about that either. I what? remember that too, yeah. Like, there was supposed to be, like, this... They were going to build an entire, like, theater around this idea of a Hunger Games player musical. I don't remember what it was. But it was in London. And it, like, the, it looked insane. And then it just kind of died out and, like, never came into fruition. I wonder if that's why Lionsgate won't let us do fan conventions and fan events because they're bitter that unofficial events might be more popular and (laughs) successful than official ones. Because, I mean, I'm hearing all these ideas and, like, that sounds cool and all, but, like, we don't need a whole musical or whatever. Like, just give us a freaking convention or like yeah, a, a an event. annual convention let us but let no us honestly do one. i would die like, for a hunger games musical that sounds insane <laughs> <laughs> we're starving i guess <laughs> no really right. though so but back like, to ballad we didn't even talk about the tiktok <laughs> so like we need, no. we need to get there <laughs> hey we got on a little side tangent the set looks amazing um oh cool I am obsessed. I, I, the 50s, 40s, 50s aesthetic has really grown on me. And it, it just, I don't know. It's not, it's like we said before, it's not what we thought it was going to be like, but like, I, I, I respect it. I think it's a good decision. I mean, the sign Anyone is else? cool <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> and I feel the like that si- confirms that the 10th uh, hunger games the t- it's um, the 10th hunger games that design that was on the propaganda poster which mm-hmm. i mean you know a few of us in this little chat may have been right about that originally <laughs> while there were doubters that said that it was the ninth hunger games but it you know looks i digress like a nine. Excuse me. <laughs> i don't remember where i was on that there were like two <laughs> images one looked like a nine and one looked like a ten so uh-huh. no, it it clearly looked like it a looked 10. like a ten. Yeah, <laughs> no, it didn't. Okay. There was a no, little there were bit two, of a nine. There were two digits, and you could yeah. you could no. see the the yeah. separation between the one and the zero. Oh my goodness! Mm. I remember it just looking so confusing. I don't know. I I thought it's there, a nine. There were some definite like I I like the same picture. I think it was like picture quality that kind of really made the difference. Because, like, one picture, yes, I could see it looking like a 9, but another picture, I was like, that's a 10. But I think it's a 10. I mean, I'm, I'm 100% sure now it's a 10. But it's a cool logo, and I think that's really, it's, it's really neat. It's neat. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. Like, with the half wing and yeah. the arrow at the bottom, and then it's got the bigger star at the top. And then, well, it's got 13, six on each side, and then the big one in the middle, which I'm assuming is the capital, right? Yeah. But it's like, why? I mean, District 13 is gone by then, and it's like, if they have time to advertise a poster for the 10th Hunger Games after District 13 is gone, why have 13 stars? Well, but if one's the capital, then 
because there's 12 small ones. Oh, that's true. No, that's true. I think we were kind of questioning that before, but like if one's the capital, then I think that makes sense. I just forget I never consider the capital like as part of the 12 districts. That's true. <laughs> they're a place. Yeah. I mean, they're a place. They're a place that's there, unfortunately. It's very Anybody neat, have anything to say else about the, the TikTok? I like the desk. I want it. I want the desk <laughs> so badly. Every time I see a set piece, I'm just going to be like, I want that <laughs> in my house. <laughs> I did I did notice that like the wallpaper um, or like whatever the wall texture is and like the front of the desk, it kind of looks like static. Yeah. Mm. Like TV yeah, that's static. What I was thinking. Yeah. And even the desk kind of looks like what you'd think an old TV looks like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought it, was looked like, too. it looks soft. Like the wall looks soft. I could touch yeah, it. I, 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 I it touch looks it. like that material that you could like put a push pin in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Put yeah. Things kind on of the sound, wall. soundproofy. I want it. I do too. <laughs> the wall? <laughs> yeah. The wall. The whole thing. <laughs> yeah. The whole thing. I wonder if they do yeah, that I in the trash just- too. I feel like you could win that at auction so easily. Like, I don't know. <laughs> if Let's hope so. Whoa, feature. Let's hope they don't throw it away. <laughs> I mean, so at, the, cool, at the rap party, they had that image projected. Up, oh, like, I think so at the cool. entrance. And then yeah. it was, it was had an, like an animation to it. So it like circled Spun. around. Like, I that wonder if so that's cool. going to be something like in the movie that's what i thought too honestly like i could see them being like welcome to the 10th hunger games and just, like, <laughs> the news starts around and like it spins that. around yeah. yes <laughs> that's why i'm hoping that like with the marketing they do some sort of like propaganda videos or something like that i could see them using tiktok for that too mm. it's like kind of yeah. weird and mysterious and yet they still say the word hunger games so it'll get people's attention um because, like, I don't know if y'all have ever watched, like, 1940s, 1950s, like, propaganda videos. They're very interesting, and I think that's kind of the vibe that they're going for with this. And I, I would love to see them do that as some sort of marketing. I think it makes sense. Yeah, I see them doing that. Yeah, I think that'd be super cool. It'd be really cool. Okay, should we talk about, there was another set photo that was a little bit different from what we'd been seeing at the Olympic Stadium. It oh, was like a gate and then, yeah, I loved it. <laughs> um, there was like a gate and then it looked like it would maybe be the area where Sejanus and Snow like break into or out of the arena. There was like some rubble there. There was like a flag I don't know. It just looked awesome to me. I'm like so excited for that scene. I, I as well. It looks really good. It. I'm glad that they're filming. I guess like the. I don't know whether to call them the interior scenes or the exterior scenes because it seems like it's kind of in between, um, mm-hmm. like the gates or whatever. I'm glad they're filming that there because the arena that they filmed, what I'm guessing is the actual arena scenes didn't really seem like what I thought in the book but with this it looks exactly like how I thought it would but the gates seem to be like just gates and not like a turnstile at least in one of the pictures so I'm just like please let enjoy the show be in the movie maybe there's turnstiles like in there I'm hoping so that's that's or maybe they're like farther out like this is an in between spot, so maybe this just isn't where they are. I hope so. I know I need that to be in there. That's like it's a requirement, an iconic moment. <laughs> what do you all think about it, though? Nobody Someone, cares about the Olympics. I, I was about to say, <laughs> somebody volunteers tribute here. Nobody's on my level. <laughs> I'm trying to find the picture. Can somebody send it? Yeah, same. Um, I'm, I've been trying to search for it. Let me find it. Thank you. Okay. 
sent it. Oh, it's so cool. Oh, I have not seen this one. Yo, this is the <laughs> yeah. first reaction for me. Yeah. The rubble on the other side. I'm a, I love. Oh, wait. I like this. This is fun. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is so it's, fun it's, for them. Yeah, like, we love it just, for them. Cozy. They're having such a great time in there. <laughs> That's a really cool picture. I okay, I'm, I kind I'm of obsessed with it. Honestly, yeah, actually, seeing it again, I don't miss the turnstiles as much. But what? Oh, I do. No. What are you talking about? I do. No, we like, need the turnstiles. We do. We need the turnstiles. I think that it's so important. Um. But still, like it, the look is so good. I wonder if those are like actual doors that are in that stadium, or if they built those. Mm. Part of me feels like they built those, but I don't know. They're so cool, though. It looks built to me. Yeah, I could see it being built. And the poster that's on the left side when you zoom mm-hmm. in. The Capitol poster. Oh, it's so good. Gosh. Just seeing like posters or like I don't know other propaganda like in there that's just been left. Let me let us take it. Just let us take it. <laughs> don't throw it in the garbage. We please, we will take it. Yeah, this is so cool. I like. I can't wait to see the arena stuff because the Olympic Stadium is just everything I ever imagined. No, honestly. There was more. It was it Mocking Jay's Nest that posted. Mm, I think there might have been like two or three pictures, but they were, I don't think they were of anything different. Oh, wait. I'm going to have to search. There was one post that they made, or I guess had in their like behind the there scenes. There was one with photos. a guy just like standing in front of, or standing with the posters. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yeah, I cropped out the guy and <laughs> posted the HD poster. Poor guy. <laughs> so it's, that was the same poster we had seen with, like, all of the tributes, like, reaching. Right? There was another one where they mm-hmm. had... I might be thinking of a different picture where they posted, like, the one that I sent in the group chat where it was, like, the person holding, like, the, the X... But it was like a bigger poster of that. Oh, at from the rap party. Yeah, well, like, yeah, the the, the picture of the, the person holding the flag of the person holding the X. But there's mm-hmm. another, like, there's a bigger poster of that in there one is? of these pictures. I believe so. My website's not loading right now. I might just, you know, it's been a stressful day. I might be having a fever dream right now of that, so I don't know. <laughs> no, but I'm I pretty believe sure you, that I saw that. But I want to see it. Me too. My website's not <laughs> the Mocky Jane Nest is not loading right now. Oh my god. Um you know it, it, <laughs> on and I will let you know if I find it. <laughs> um I mean I feel like the other thing just in the past week or like and this weekend was everybody in the cast posting the like the saddest posts about rapping like they were very happy but just seeing like so many like one after another i don't know it's kind of emotional it's very sad i i i felt i feel the same way that i felt when i watched the first hunger games movie with my sister um it was at the like not the premiere but it was the midnight screening of it and she was like oh are you sad that it's over when it was done and i was like no we have so much more to go through like so we still have at least like the promotion like the actual promotion and then like the movie and it's still like a year on from now but i do have to remind myself that there are no more books after this so who knows what they're gonna do after that there's gonna mm. be another book i know it i i put it i feel <laughs> I it in my it. bones yeah i do too i'm, I'm really such hoping. a pessimist <laughs> i just I, I don't want to get excited <laughs> yeah like I'm already like I I know myself, you know what I mean. Like I'm still very much like Stranger Things is going to bring back Eddie, you guys. Like I'm so <laughs> they are they are. I know I'm, they like, will. I'm so convinced. There's like no arguing about it, and like I, 
am so convinced in my delusion <laughs> that, you know, it's like, I'm aware that I can do this. And so I don't want to like stranger things is a special interest, but hunger games is like the main one. Mm. And like, I'm really not trying to like, like, what's the word? Let Just yourself absolutely down. push myself over the edge. <laughs> <laughs> it's a total delusion like we're for sure getting another book well like even if we do get another book who knows how long it would yeah, be yeah that could be like 20 years from now like we don't yeah. know. I mean, and then, I hope so, fear, but... then there's also the fear of like would they do something not based on a book a la fantastic Ooh. beasts because okay. that's scary to me i hope so i'd uh, take it I take it. I would take it, but it would have to be really good because I'd be. I feel like, you know, this isn't a chat about the Fantastic Beast franchise, but I just I need to say this. I feel like it's fine, but I can definitely tell like what was adapted from a book versus what was just made to be a movie in that world. And in my opinion, the integrity of the story falls very short in comparison i feel like game of thrones had a similar thing like the minute that the show mm-hmm. passed the books it fell off really hard yeah. and mm-hmm. that would just be a fear unless you know of course they keep suzanne as like an executive producer or something on there and she has a, a significant say but you know we've said it before on here like i don't we don't always trust her judgment <laughs> or like what she actually cares about it's hard to decipher sometimes um i mean it's interesting to think about like what could they do that's you know just like meant to be as like a a limited series or a movie or whatever but hey mitch's games but also don't <laughs> right. don't don't say limited series are around Lionsgate because they were supposed to make Allegiant Part Two and two limited series. Oh no! Okay, but that's their own that. fault. Okay, Allegiant. Yeah, was I would love best. a Hunger Games limited series. Oh, I'll same. Take- People will watch this one, you know. Right, because Allegiant <laughs> was a hot mess. Okay, it was a lot of absolutely. Fun. I mean, they were gonna call it Ascendant, right? Yeah. Oh, oh gosh. Y- yikes. It was a lot of fun in a way where it wasn't supposed to be fun, and that's not good. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's supposed to be a serious, right? Not I just, thing. Like I couldn't handle the 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 flying bubble vehicles. No. <laughs> what are you talking about? Those are great. <laughs> no. Listen, Francis Lawrence, if you're listening, no flying bubble vehicles in ballad. It's not yeah, a single no, no. one. We're getting the opposite know, of man. that. We're getting like 19, 1940s cars and stuff. Which, like, how are they going to do drones? It still, like, boggles my mind. Because how I imagine True. the book, I do not mean to go on a tangent here, but, like, when I imagined the book when I was reading it, it was, like, more modern, like, our time. Because, like, drones were not a thing in the original Hunger Games series. So I was like, oh, Suzanne, just, like, getting with the times because everybody has drones now and like how are you supposed to do a 40s 50s aesthetic to a drone i don't know see i i imagine it almost as like primitive technology compared to like the time Mm -hmm. in the original hunger games trilogy like i i i am very interested to see how they're gonna like shape um the like the 50s era vibes into ballad Mm -hmm. because it's like doing a disservice to like how it's described in the book because it feels more i don't know if that makes any sense but it does yeah like i really i'm very i'm i'm suspending any judgment until i watch the movie obviously because i don't want to you know get my hopes up or anything but i i'm i am pretty interested in how they're going to do that I am as well. It's going to be fun to see what they do with it. Because, I mean, from what I've seen, it seems like it's going to be pretty faithful um, of it, like an, of an adaptation, but I just am like, d- does not match the vibe that I was going with at all, but I still am here for it. Right. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's still like this like dystopian timeline. So, yeah, it's just pretty interesting. Maybe they want to include the drones. 
Oh. It's so important. They better. It's I so would important. hate I would hate if they don't include it. I would not be happy. I wouldn't either. It's like what would they do? Just like have somebody come out and like throw water bottles? <laughs> what, if they, what if they just don't have anything? Um, don't don't bring no. that energy into the, no. the podcast. I feel Stop. like this isn't like the biggest, most important plot point. Wait, wait, but then, it's an important plot. It point, is. Though. It adds yeah. some characters to the characters' deaths. It, it ties into the original series as well with the the um, hovercraft dropping the parachutes. The par- the parachutes, but I think that they could just you could say have that both. establish that that's something they're going to do for the eleventh games or something. No, uh, I mean if you saw that picture that Rachel Zegler reposted today with the actress that plays, is, is it Wovi? Uh, uh, oh, Sophia Sanchez. Yes, oh. where like mm-hmm. her face, her face is all oh, dirty, no. and she was like. Rachel Zegler mm-hmm. was like, oh, sorry if my face is covered in dirt. I was just dropped oh, out of a truck. Um, that's uh, Luna Steeples. That's Dill. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. She's so adorable. I can't stand it. I love it. Um, but at least they're at least having the characters get dumped into a petting z- or into a zoo. Like, I-, I think they're staying pretty close to the book, so I can't see the drones mm-hmm. not being in it. And like with Francis Lawrence especially, I mean, he added thank god i mean we don't have chase on this chat um so i (laughs) so like i can say i mean francis lawrence definitely took a lot of the details of the book and put it in like a lot of stuff that i couldn't even imagine gary ross putting in like the hovercrafts picking up the dead bodies in the arena that wasn't in the first movie but it was in catching fire i think he cares and i think he i can't see a way of them like justifying writing that out i don't know I think I mean, you can maybe have just both. for time. I don't know. I think you can have both. I just imagined like I didn't think like the the technology or the style of like the look, like their fashion matches the uh the technology. I just imagined that um it was still kind of advanced. Like we haven't seen like the technology, what it looks like. We've only seen like the screen with the we see gray on it. Yeah, they didn't really. We've they didn't seen really the cars, though. I feel like the cars it's, throws me. I off. still think that's like a stylistic thing, though. Like they, the capital, like, <laughs> they have like super engines in there. Yeah, they might like that. just like I mean, look old. We don't really no, know. No, Jerry, I'm agreeing with you on this. I feel like okay. it's more of a, a stylistic thing instead of like, oh, it's technology from the 1940s or 1950s. I still think that it's. It can still be futuristic with the style of it being post like World War Two kind of like. Okay, I hope that's how it is. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm imagining this whole time. But if it's not, then I don't don't know. I mean, even back in like the nineteen the nineteen twenties, I don't know if y'all have seen Metropolis. I think it's from like. it, it's it's fabulous but it's like a future dystopian movie it's like yeah. four hours long it's very long but they pre- they it has a 1920s aesthetic because it was filmed then but it's also mm. very futuristic and yeah kind of had it had like robots and like holograms and stuff like that so i could see this being like that i mean it has they just started post-production so who knows what we'll end up seeing in the end but it's interesting that this is a topic of, topic of conversation for a Hunger Games movie. We're, we're just like, oh, I can't imagine it being futuristic, but like, who knows what'll happen with it? I don't know. It's it's interesting. I just can't the wait to see tra- it all put together. Yeah, I, yeah. I think we're just seeing pieces of what the big picture is actually going to be like. I, I don't know if I'm just being hopeful and like optimistic, but I think there's more to it than what we have seen. Especially yeah, since we really haven't, it, sorry, yeah, sorry. no, it's okay. I mean, we haven't really seen a whole lot from it in the grand yeah. scheme of things. We really haven't. It would be real disappointing if they didn't have the drones or anything like that. Because how could you get the supplies in the arena? And it's also like, how if you had nineteen forties era technology, how could you have you know literal imitations? Right, yeah. If your science True. was that advanced, yeah. To yeah. That, which is a very big plot of the like big big plot point of the book, like 
I, I think it'll be interesting to see what they do with it, but I think they're going to go with a good mix of like, I think it is an aesthetic choice, but I don't think that's strictly like what they're going to be doing with it, yeah. if that makes sense. Jerry, yeah, I'm on your side I here. Think. I hope, I mean, that's what I'm thinking. I hope it's like that. If it's not, then I'll be disappointed. I will as well. But I mean, judging from like the Lucy Gray shot that we got like you know the 10 seconds or whatever yes it's a like i said last time it, it's a retro style tv but like it's in color and yeah it's it goes against kind of the convention the conventions of what people think of when they think of like a retro tv so i'm hoping that they're just doing it for aesthetic purposes and it's also like that was set in the capital i'm interested to see what the districts are going to look like. Mm, yeah. Like, I think that's an important point, like the te- technology difference um, between the capital and the district and how that's going to change um, the style, the style choices um, and like, you know, influence the, the, the power that the capital has over the districts because they hold the technology. I'm so excited to see this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have anything else valid related the last two weeks? That's all I had on my list. Well, I could not find that picture that I was talking about with the I couldn't sign, find it so, either. <laughs> you know, I it must have been a fever dream or something else. I don't know. But no, not really. So I, I hope that we have some more valid news to talk about next week because we're gonna be starving I, for a while. I cross feel. your Ooh. fingers for a TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> if not, like, it'll be our hopefully own. Hopefully, they just games. filmed like fifty-two, and they'll just release like one every week, right? Right. Yep. <laughs> right. We could just DM Francis Lawrence or something. I'm Reese. sure. The, I'm the sure we'll get it figured the, out. The guy that does the TikToks. Yeah, Reese. Reese. Yeah. I I know people that know him. I could ask. <laughs> <laughs> potentially tell them through the grapevine you know be like hey could you give so- us the schedule you know <laughs> <laughs> so we can anticipate here <laughs> blink That's twice need. it's a weekly basis <laughs> honestly <laughs> blink once if it's a monthly basis <laughs> monthly please i don't no. know i'm just trying to give options here <laughs> they're all very good options i mean this Eat is our own tributes. hunger games is waiting for the next promo for the hunger games let me see your camera roll <laughs> just real quick i would pay so much money to see his camera roll i just think it's funny that like when he did the season or not the season the lucky flickerman thing um he just like had his phone on the desk and he was just like kind of chill and relax about it and i was like <laughs> show that set some respect <laughs> that is an artifact <laughs> stay in character at the very least <laughs> like and like when he posted that tiktok people were like oh are you in the movie oh and i'm just like he looks like a Yikes. like a brooklyn hipster like he, he <laughs> clearly <laughs> like i'm glad that they're not going with a brooklyn hipster aesthetic and i'm like 90 percent <laughs> sure that he, reese does live in brooklyn so i mean it tracks but it's no no (laughs) i'm excited though i you know this is going to be a tough few months for us it is not hearing anything we'll get like that's what's sad about it wrapping because there's there's not going to be any more (laughs) leaked set photos which i I brought up this podcast before but that um Wonka Watch podcast that talks about the upcoming Timothy Chalamet oh my gosh, Wonka no. movie. I can't believe that's a thing. <laughs> no, it keeps get, it keeps getting delayed. It, like the movie keeps getting delayed. Like every few days, it's insane. Like it was supposed to come out this year, and now it's coming out in like 2023. Um, they they those girls they find something to talk about every single week. Every Wonka single Watch. week. That's hilarious. It's, I recommend no. it. It's very good. It's very funny. I don't. I don't even want to see that movie. But like, I'm. I'm here for their dedication. So, if they can be that dedicated for a movie that doesn't come out for like a lot longer than they anticipated, then we can too. We got this. We'll think of something. We can. I mean, there's been weeks where we haven't really had news, but we've still always talked about ballad. 
It always goes back to ballad. Mm-hmm. It does. Mm-hmm. So on a mocking Jay. <laughs> yeah, mocking Jay. <laughs> Chapters. 19 and 19 20? 19 and 20, yes. That's what we're on, part three. Dun, dun, dun. Finally on part three. The final act. The most insane part <laughs> ever. Really? Half of this I could not even, when I read it, I could not even imagine happening ever in real life. Yeah. Even, I mean, we'll get to it, but even just like the oil or mass or whatever the heck that is spewing from the street it's just it's also d- weird and like i i still can't imagine like knowing mm-hmm. like seeing the movie it is this it seems more realistic but like in the book it seems more like weirdly fantastical and like more it's disturbing i don't know it's it's yeah. different it's different the movies i feel like changed a lot of things to make it more realistic which I mean I, I get because they wanted to do it realistically <laughs> but, but I think what part of it was horrifying is that like it's hard to imagine yeah true and it's not like they didn't have the budget to like do what's actually in the book but yeah a lot of the little details about like the pods and different things are, are not translated as they are in the book dialogue is overall kind of similar but Mm -hmm. it's it's the fine details that are different okay so the beginning of 19 PETA has just arrived to be part of the squad Uh, I I love that Boggs is mad too I've never (laughs) really seen Boggs angry before Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's the first line And then I, I, Boggs and, and she have that conversation about like why Coin would want her dead to not be a threat anymore. It's so good because like it just shows how Boggs is really the best character in the entire trilogy. <laughs> yeah. She's the only one who can be like actually real with Katniss. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean it, I don't know how far down we are, but I mean, on the next page of chapter 19, when, I mean, it's it's kind of verbatim in the movie, but Katniss is like, why you don't owe me anything? And he said, because you've earned it. And then he says, now get back to your squad. Like, I wish that they would have, I don't know, like the whole now get back to your squad thing. It, it feels different than in the movie where he's just like, because you've earned it. And then it's the next scene. But it shows here that he's more of a commander. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. How like, to well, she's it. like earned her place in the squad too. Yeah. Like, this is something that she's earned. Cause she went through like all that training. That, I mean, that was not in the movie. So mm-hmm. I guess that maybe is also why it feels a little different. Like she's I part guess- of a team. It sounds but like then she, he, was, she was talking about her being part of the games, too. That's how I read it. Yeah. But then, like, when he's like, now get back to your squad. It's just, like, it's so out of left field. Um, but also, like, so on character for him. Like, I, I don't know. It just That part just kind of, like, I don't want to say it threw me off. I just had forgotten about that because it's not in the movie. It, he just says in the movie, because you've earned it. And then she just kind of walks off. And then the book is just like, now get back to your squad. <laughs> right. I think I think it's consistent for his character in the book, like how it's written. But it, there is definitely a difference in the movie. Like it wouldn't make sense for that line to be in the movie. Not at all. But it's still such a good line. I, I, I don't know. I mm-hmm. dwindled on that line yeah for a minute i was like oh i forgot about that yeah i really like it because like it's this continued thing of katniss seeing like people owe her stuff she owes people like she's always in someone's debt you know like that's like a continued trend it is but it's also so frustrating i got really frustrated with katniss in this part um 
because she was like, I know I should feel appreciative of Bong sticking his <laughs> neck out for me, but really, I'm frustrated. Like, <laughs> with her I own mean, issues. <laughs> like, oh God, like, I get it. I get it. Like, I, I, I would, I would not want to be in debt with somebody that saved my life or whatever but like just girl just move on like it's you're in war like it's just go on with it it's fine I love that she's just like I need to ditch them right now no really (laughs) it's so interesting because it's like being in the arena like that's exactly it but but it's also different because she's with a squad this time that like theoretically aren't going to like they're all on the same team working towards an end goal like technically they all could survive you know i mean they well, all pretty much don't but <laughs> I was about to say, well, uh, it's, like they're not it's, killing each other yeah it's like in um catching fire arena not necessarily the hunger games arena but like how she was in a pack with people and she was still trying to plan on ditching them mm-hmm. and like wasn't yeah. sure if she should trust them or not and then even no, we're not to that point, but even with like that black like goo wave thing, that just reminded me of the wave and catching fire. Like the oh. gaming. Mm-hmm. Like it's nothing, it's all just like there's nothing new. It's just the arena and like in war, you know, in real life. Mm-hmm. It, that's very interesting, and I agree. I I see such a complex character. Mm-hmm. So good. But so yeah, like good. I love all the comparisons between like the arena and what that's like versus the actual war. I mean, that's like what Susan was trying to do, trying to write. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah, like the what we use for entertainment and how we consume it. It's like look at its real life effects, you know, like how's mm-hmm. it played out in real life and yeah. You'll see there's not a lot of differences, you know. Um, yeah, but even like how when she was talking about, you know, like the similar, you don't owe me anything, how she does that a lot in the arenas, but then it even reflects how she feels about herself. Like later on, I'm getting ahead, but later on in this chapter, um, or maybe it's the next chapter, how she's interacting with PETA and the like real or not real game. And like she just feels she says she feels worthless um and like it goes back to her this mentality of her feeling like she owes people things not capable of like doing things on her own being in people's debt um like it's just like this mentality of how she views herself and it's shaping her behaviors and how she always feels like she needs to ditch people you know because she doesn't Mm -hmm. feel like she's actually useful also but like sad without Peta too because he's always the one that like she was looking to or like yeah made her kind of feel like special or like more yeah. valuable and so she's really angry that he's not around and I don't know like she doesn't so really sad. feel like that anymore because yeah. he, he's not giving that to her oh, it's tough it's so sad especially if she thinks like that person is gone forever or if that person was just like not real and then this pita is like the true pita and that his like his real colors are sh- showing quote unquote but yeah like that's that's like so sad and heartbreaking yeah then saying like all this nasty stuff to her and so she's like okay this is the real pita and that that's the real me yeah Oof. so sad it's so sad <laughs> but also point of confusion for me was when like Jackson puts her in her rotate in rotation. Um, and then he says, mid or Jackson says, midnight at n- midnight to four, you're on with me. And then it says the dinner whistle sounds. I was trying to imagine this, knowing like at least seeing the movie or whatever. Do they have like a cause she also talks about the canteen later? in this in this chapter and i'm just like did they set up an entire canteen with like just these few people and why is there a dinner whistle who's who's on kitchen duty here (laughs) who's blowing the whistle (laughs) literally like who's doing this (laughs) peter just making everybody cakes like i just don't (laughs) like i remember when i read this part 
the for the first time ever i was just like oh they're out in like some distant encampment and there are like other people with them but then like the more and more i reread it i was like oh wait, no it's just them so like who's they set up an entire canteen and someone's blowing a dinner whistle <laughs> in, in this sort of environment i don't know Jeez. yeah suzanne explain i don't Literally. know it, it, it took it took me out a little bit i was very confused when i was rereading this um still very good though i cannot complain about any of it i like how gail just walks up to her and goes do you uh, want me to kill him <laughs> <laughs> which Awful. she's like taken aback by but i'm like yeah. katniss two seconds ago you I were know. like i, I could shoot Peta. He's, yeah. he's not Peta anymore he's at my <laughs> like what mm. maybe she it just know sounds bad wants. like coming from someone else she coming was like oh gail especially oh that is harsh it's like gail's awful we don't like gail we don't like gail just a weekly reminder <laughs> literally um <laughs> I mean, she says, like, but even though I'm furious, the brutality of the offer rattles me. So, like, I mean, I feel like this is kind of like the, I don't want to say it's the first. Scale has many awful, awful attributes to him. But I think this piles on to the fact that, like, he doesn't care about human life at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or he easily dehumanizes or otherizes people. I could not have said it better myself. Yes. Yes, this is yes. Yeah, he's very good at that. Um, and I think like kind of she, you know, she was just saying how she could easily kill Peta, but hearing it from Gail, I think she got freaked out because she actually believes Gail would. And like deep down maybe she she really thought that she couldn't actually kill Peta, even though she said she said she could. I agree. Ugh. They're both mentally ill. It's fine. They both need therapy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of that going around in Mockingjay. I, no, yeah. I mean, honestly, everybody in this book needs therapy. <laughs> yeah. Every single person. But then we um, get uh, Hey Mitch having a oh, conversation I with him. Knocking some sense into her. I hate how that scene was deleted from the movie. Yeah. But, but have you seen the deleted scene? Though? It was such I, a I've good seen all scene. of them. <laughs> I think it's terrible. Wait, really? I, I it love it. So <laughs> cheesy. No, no, no. I just... It was like, cut that out. <laughs> I mean, it's weird. Lo- it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> most of the deleted scenes, I agree with that. Like, a, a lot of them, I'm just like, that's cheesy and weird. But like, with this one, I mean, I don't, I haven't seen it in a minute. But when I was rereading, this chapter for tonight i was like oh yeah that's like that deleted scene and i loved it i was like oh man i wish i was in the book in the movie mm-hmm. i wish the moment was in the movie but i i remember seeing the deleted scene and it being very obvious that they like weren't actually talking to each other you know uh, they're like oh uh, what do you what do you film that weird his, video chat. and then she filmed hers and yeah it was just so it just did not match up which I mean, granted, though, in the book, it does say phone call. It doesn't say video call. Yeah, I mean, I, I do love do the it. moment, though. It's very, I mean, he knocks some sense into her, though, at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah, he's like, think yeah. about it in reverse. Yeah. And that Oof. really doesn't Kattis matter. Is like, Kattis is like, wait, I have to think of somebody else other than myself. <laughs> like. <laughs> I love Katniss to death, but oh my goodness, she does not think of other people that well. <laughs> well, it was partially because she thinks so poorly of herself, and when you do that, like you can't really think of other people all that well, too. I feel like I feel like I'm talking to my therapist here. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good advice. <laughs> it is very good advice. No, she's been through a lot. She's, she's Katniss has gone through too much. Yeah. Um, I I don't know if we talked about this in the last episode. I don't think we did. But for those that are un- unaware, I'm sure you all kind of know. But Squad Four Five One. That's a reference to Ray Bradbury's novel Fahrenheit Four Fifty One. 
Do y'all know that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know that. I haven't read the book. So oh, but it is a, it's it's a cool so reference. It's so good. It's so good. 10 out of 10, recommend. Um, Ray Bradbury is an awful person, but that book is very good. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of separating um, the art and the artist. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, the, to an extent, it, it, I can do it, but there's only so far I can go. But Suzanne referenced it, obviously. That's why she named it Squad 451. Um, and I just think that it's... I, I wish that it was more of like a thing in the movie because... I mean, we'll get there, but like when they, it leads up to Boggs's death, um, the whole like putting on the makeup and like reenacting the the gun fire and all that stuff, and they're all like laughing, mm-hmm. and then like mm-hmm. automatically like Boggs gets his legs blown off, and it's like whoa, crap, what's what's happening? Um, I wish that they would have kept that. I think that it's. I think that's such an interesting dynamic. Well, and just how fast it happened too, like yeah, it's it's more disturbing that way. I think mm-hmm. yeah. yeah like, I I wrote a note there. I mean, we're skipping ahead a little bit, but I wrote down that I wish that they had done it in the movie this way instead of it being serious and then going into that moment. Like yeah, it would be so like awful to see them kind of be lulled into kind of like oh, this isn't really you know that well, intense. A false sense kind of security. Of like, yeah, kind of you know, laughing and having kind of like a a good time almost. And then reading about how there was the fake smoke that was added for the the cameras. And then it, it gets added to with like the real thing. I just, that's so chilling. I, I didn't remember that part at all. And Mm. that really struck me. I didn't either. What a trap. Those, uh, I mean, I can't. These entire traps are very scary. I wish I would have yeah. went more into them in the movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, we'll get to there, especially like as we read later chapters, but they're insane. <laughs> the traps are insane. Especially near the end. Uh, oh, especially like the streets you know. that swallow people like that. <laughs> A whole section i just was like what is going on here and it's intense it's very intense and i mean this is kind of where like to put it lightly where crap hits the fan <laughs> mm. i want to say other words but like it's <laughs> technically we are a clean <laughs> podcast <laughs> all right i'm trying here i am trying here it's 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 hard for my vernacular um <laughs> but this this is when Stuff gets real. Was I, is when Boggs gets his legs blown off. It's all fun and games until then. But anyway, it's all um, fun and games, and we get the "You're a painter, you're a baker." Line. I was gonna say, Ronnie. Of course, you skipped <laughs> over the little romantic bit. <laughs> yeah, Le- I love that. my depressing. Listen, I'm in a mood tonight. Let me get to my depressing stuff. <laughs> Let me enjoy my Everlark stuff to cheer me up. Okay? No, it's very, yeah, it's very, and, and like, and I, the start of real or not real. And I yes. loved, I loved, how, I did love how they do it in the movie because, like, it was kind of verbatim. Mm-hmm. They did a great job. They did a really great job with that. But I'll, I'll let you guys go off on your little tangents about that it's moment one of my favorite lines ever is you're a painter you're a baker you sleep with the window no. like, like, you always ah, double not no. your shoelaces ah, i just start crying every time i see it it's just so sweet and it's the first time katniss starts to look at pita as pita again and that's just what makes me so happy because mm. she's just kind of given up on him before like you guys were talking about before she sees I mean, him like, as a mutt. Literally the page b- before she was literally like screw him, kill him. I won't be shooting PETA. <laughs> He's gone. Joanna's right. I'd rather be, it'd just be like shooting another another Capitals mutts. Another one of the Capitals mutts. I mean yeah. oh. It's so sad because it, it it really does describe like the battle with mental health because there's that fine line of is 
like is the person still there or is this who they are now you know after people like go through some type of trauma or you know war or something of that nature and like sometimes like you get glimpses and then like sometimes they recover not fully and then you know so other times it's just really hopeless but like mm-hmm. she describes that battle so well though with like even on the same page 271 like above how she talks about like how hard that would be try to imagine not being able to tell illusion from reality like oh that broke my heart but that's exactly what's happening that's a great way to put it it really is and i didn't think about like some of the lines hit me like uh Peta spends a long time considering even small pieces of information like where people bought their soap back home mm. I don't know uh, it's just such a small like detail like there's so much that he's confused about that he needs to like remember accurately and like sort through not just like these bigger things and that was that was just sad to me it's sad Poor Peter. He doesn't deserve any of this. No, not at all. (laughs) But I do love that Jackson is the one that comes up with the real or not real game. I was literally just about to say that. No, no, no. (laughs) And she is the one who like pairs them up in a certain way so that there's like a diversified group that people who know Pita better and like not as well or together so she's really helping Pete out Jackson is the saving grace of this chapter no (laughs) no (laughs) Holly's such a hater (laughs) she also was like well for starters we're your squad yeah like like she's just trying to (laughs) she's like you can trust us like that's a fact like you know it's fine she's fine I give her a little bit of credit but she's not the saving grace that's too much <laughs> that's too much credit for her if I mean anything, I would, that goes to Boggs this I chapter. was about to say mm-hmm. Boggs would definitely be the saving grace of this chapter but Jackson is the second runner-up mm. <laughs> well she's the number in my two opinion. so <laughs> doing her job not anymore oh god okay. <laughs> A hollow was not granted to her. <laughs> um, well, then we get the end of this chapter. And we talked about how depressing oh, that is. That God. last line triggering the bum that blows off his legs. Like, is- Suzanne, no, really? that made me. That really? made me- that made me like physically sick when I first read it. I remember like, right where after I they're was. laughing. I, just, I can't. Yes. I think that's one of my favorite chapter endings I've read in a while. It's really Same. good. I also, I love the small detail of like the, oh gosh, what was it? Um, it was when the gun pod went off and she was like, when he hits the pod, we take cover, ducking into doorways and flattering, yeah, flattering onto the pretty light orange and pink pa- paving stones. Like just imagining just like a street or a sidewalk, I guess, guess, covered in pink and orange paving stones. Yeah, the contrast. That was such, yeah, and, and just like getting covered in blood. That's so disturbing, but so interesting. And I mean, I can't imagine even just like the Hunger Games trilogy in general, like the movies, having pink and orange pavement stones, not even valid having that as well. So it's, it's I think it's a cool image. Yeah, I I underlined that line. Uh, Laughter changes to screams, blood stains, pastel stones, real smoke darkens the special effects stuff made for television. Uh, So good. Uh, So good. You know what that kind of reminds me of? Uh, When the trip uh, in Ballard, when uh, before uh, Arachne dies, when they're all Mm. laughing and... (gasps) juggling uh the trivia are juggling and they're all having a good time and then mm. boom yes i like that same vibe i didn't right. think about that i yes. hope that's like that in the movie yeah oh yeah it's just I, like I, this instant 
mood change. <laughs> yeah, but but, but not like them. But not like the Mockingjay Part One ad or Part Two adaptation, where it's just like yeah. serious the entire time. <laughs> I hope they actually do that. Me too. It'd be more realistic that way. Yeah. That's actually what happens, like in war. Whenever, yeah, that's just what happens when victims are involved. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> Suzanne knows what she's doing. Mm-hmm. Just a little bit. <laughs> Seems Just like it. <laughs> I mean, especially as like the war in Ukraine and stuff goes on, it's just like you're hearing details about stuff like this. Mm-hmm. And it's it's yeah. disturbing. It's very disturbing. Mm-hmm. It's a little too close to home reading this book. Yeah. Yeah. literally especially now like i'm just like suzanne you know what you're doing so then, then bugs we're... transfers the control of the hollow to katniss wait you're skipping my favorite part of is the oh, I did? Of chapter tw- of, of chapter 20 very beginning of the part um it's a vis. It's a. It's as if in an instant, painted window shatters, revealing the ugly world behind it. Laughter changes into screams. Blood stains pastel stones. Real smoke targets. I mean, we t- we did talk about this a little bit, but I just read that. <laughs> I know, but like, <laughs> it's beginning of chapter twenty, and it's so terrifying. And the second explosion, um. It, it, I don't know. This this whole thing is insane. It's insane. It is good. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Um, but yes, he makes her transfer her stuff to the hollow. Mm. And then um, immediately after that, the the oil tar stuff. I don't even know what it is. Which I was just imagining a normal city block when I read this. And it, I could not like imagine what it would be like in the movie. I was just imagining a tidal wave of just black tar or something like that at the end of the street. But I like how they did it in the movie. It's I think very it's more epic and scary in the movie. When I saw mocking j part two um at the premiere it was like one of the biggest screens like imax screens in the country and when that part came up and like they were like it was closing the the doors of that like i don't want to say doors but like mm-hmm. the barrier of that apartment building and the oil started spilling i was speechless i was just like what what is it's so big and grand i mean it's different than what i thought that it would be but It was very cool. Yeah, in the book, it's described as like geysers coming out from the ground, which is interesting, kind of like blocking them and then they have to run from it. But also like my big thing with this is that like she said that it was neither like a liquid or a gas, but like in the movie, it was very much a liquid, I would say. Yeah, there was was one part it was like not mechanical nor natural. And I'm like, what? I can't even picture it then. I don't know. That's a lot of this, like the later part of Mockingjay though, is like, it's a lot of weird descriptions like that. It's, it's just like, what? What's going on here, Suzanne? Suzanne's like, yeah, you can imagine whatever it looks like in your mind. Is like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally. Well, yeah, I mean, that opens it up to just like leaving it up to the reader to imagine anything that they want that they think would be scary. Yeah. I don't know. I like that. And then, she... and then they're they're dragging bugs along. So awful. Like, like yeah. in the movie, obviously they He's just dead leave him there. But it's I feel like that is that is like R rated. <laughs> like yes. didn't include that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. I mean he's alive for a good bit after this. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's a this while, part? yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, and the trap for Mitchell. Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, oh. That's probably one of the worst ways to die. Um, I mean, they had it, at least in theory, in the movie. 
but it was never explained that it was like a barbed wire trap. It was just like sound effects and then him just getting hoisted up. But mm-hmm. it, still, it's it's so disturbing. It's so upsetting. PG-13. PG-13. I know, PG-13, which I'm worried about what they'll cut from Ballad because it's probably going to be PG-13. But even that in the movie, it's still terrifying. You just like, he just falls and he just hoists it up and he's instantly dead. It is. Like, it yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. I trust Pope Francis to like stride the guidelines of like what's rated R and PG-13. I feel like he knows what to show and what not to show. I feel like it's different now. Like I feel like you can get away with a lot more now. Compared I was to thinking that, that as well. Yes. Let's hope we get some hanging <laughs> dead tributes. <laughs> oh, no. oh my god. <laughs> As much as I don't want to see that, I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Um, and, well, then Boggs tells Katniss, "Don't trust them. Don't go back. Kill Peta. Do what you came to do." Which that line confuses me a little bit. Like. Who is he talking? Who's the don't trust them that he's talking about? And then District the, 13. Do, do what you came. Okay, he's talking about like coin. That's kind of what I think. Yeah. But yeah. I'm like, it could also be like the squad too, because he yeah. also says kill PETA. But I feel like the squad is kind of a a figure of District 13. Because they're still all following mm. District so 13's like, don't, orders. Don't trust anybody. Yeah. I, I I mean, I think he kind of saw that Katniss was there on a on a certain mission, which is to kill snow, to kill snow, um, and well, I think th- that he then he says, "Do what you came to do," and which is to kill like, snow. What? But how does he know? I he just like knows. It, do things. what you came to do, and I was thinking about the movie because, like, I was skipping ahead to later when Katniss confesses, and they were like. Oh, well, yeah, like, you announced it to everybody like I kill snow. So obviously Boggs knew that that's, you know, ultimately what you wanted to do. But then in the movie, that doesn't happen. So his like do what you came to do in the movie is kind of weird. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, that would make sense. Because I forgot was... about that I kill snow thing in, in the book because they took it out in the film. Well, which is funny because like I remember there was an interview with Nina um, right after part one, at least I think it was the trailer came out and somebody asked her, like, is Katniss going to have the declaration of I kill snow? And she was like, well, no, not necessarily, but like, it's going to be clear in the movie. And I'm like, is it? <laughs> after seeing it's, it's, like, it's is clear, it? <laughs> I feel like for Katniss, but like, I don't know. I just don't know how Boggs would know that that's like what she wants to do or like anybody else i mean as much as we like to critique this this was made for an audience of teenagers so it's you know it it, it's suspension of disbelief i guess to to us to a certain point i guess because like we as an audience know yeah that's what she wants to do Boggs just had some intel. I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah, let, let's let's write a fanfic about how Boggs got some intel on how Katniss is going to kill Snow. <laughs> I'm here for it. But, well, and well, even later on, like no one was surprised whenever Katniss like comes clean. Yeah, like, they all kind of mm-hmm. knew what they were signing up for, and I mean, if they all knew that clearly Boggs would figure that you know he would obviously know you know um I just I don't think much would get past him so I don't know I agree with that Cressida wonder or Katniss wonders why Cressida is on her side and I'm like do we think that she liked Katniss like and wanted to support her or just like really wanted to film whatever was gonna happen. <laughs> Might have been a mix of both, honestly. I could see that like, like she wants to be like she's tired of filming like the propaganda films and like wants to be at the action. 
I could see her wanting to be at the action, but I could also see her caring about Katniss and being like, okay, I'm picking up what you're throwing down here. Chase's distaste for <laughs> Chris is like yeah. rubbing off, on on off on me. <laughs> I feel like, I mean, Cressida is still like capital to begin with. Like, you know, even if she defected, that's where she grew up. That's what shaped her initial way of being, I guess. And I feel like she has a genuine interest, but it's still like limited as far as what she can actually do if that makes sense or how she shows it Mm. right yeah i feel like for her she's probably doing the most that she feels like she can and to be fair she's putting herself in danger going out there you know for the cause it's not like it's like a safe job for her to do right um or for for the filming opportunity right she seems to be well known in the capital so it's like the sacrifice of her yeah. go out there and film for the her rebellion her career whatever mm. and i mean yeah to me that's somebody who actually is like real like they're authentic with what they say they're doing mm. um, that's a good point i don't think that she could ever comprehend or be on the same wavelength as people who come from the districts especially not 12 so, like, she's never going to understand Katniss in the way that Hamish or Peta or even Gail or, you know, in, throw in, you know, Finnick and Joanna in there as well. But I think she's doing what she can do with her perspective and her skill set. Queen. Okay, I like that. Well said. <laughs> yeah. I'm out here to defend her. <laughs> Get that chase. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I'll say it again. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that, I mean, we haven't mentioned this yet, but the fumes of the black tar also was not really a thing in the movie. Um, they seemed just kind of comfortable with it. And they're like, oh, it's this black goo. Whatever. But I like the fact that they put on like masks and stuff to go out to go to the other apartment, which also was like weird to me because they it's on the first floor. It seems like they say that they go out the kitchen and they're in the courtyard. And I'm like, how are they on the first floor when like this goo piled up for so long? I mean, I don't know if I'm just thinking of the movie where like it went up two floors or whatever, but. It's strange. <laughs> trying to find the page where it describes that. Um, it was. <laughs> Oh, it's on page six or two ninety three. Um, okay. at the very bottom, where it says Jackson scowls, snatches the hollow for me, and taps in a command. At an an intersection comes up. If we go out the kitchen door, there's a small courtyard, in the back of another corner apartment unit. Um, we're looking at an overview for streets that meet at an intersection. Like, how it, are they going out into a courtyard when? Like, are they supposed to be high up? I don't understand. Yeah, that is kind of confusing. It's like, if the goo's going to go into their apartment, I mean, I don't know if it's just because of the movie where I was like, oh, they're on the second floor of a building and the goo is there. Doesn't just like closing the door, though, like them being inside, (laughs) remove them from it? I mean, I'd hope so. I would guess so. It's so hard to think about this in in parallel, like with the film and like the no, visual really. there. Yeah, yeah no, the really. film just confuses me. me. Yeah, same. I mean, the film is brilliant. Like, Francis, if you're listening, we love you. We stand. But what the heck happened to this? <laughs>
and then they leave the apartment and Katniss is like, put on your masks. We're going out the way we came. Which, can I say, I don't understand why. Because Jackson has decided to stay. and Like, all of them have decided to stay with her. And yeah, she, Katniss has the hollow, but why is Jackson not still in charge? Like, if they've all decided to go on this I think they just kind of, they just accepted a defeat at this point. Where they're like, all right, we'll, we'll listen to Katniss. Because it's a book made for teenagers. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of like Suzanne just needed a moment of her being in charge and leading. But like, it doesn't really make sense. It doesn't. It definitely I still takes think you out Jackson would bit. be like strategically like leading the mission if she's there. But okay. <laughs> she's just bitter. Well, if she, yeah, if she was like strategically leading the mission, then she would strategically lead them back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, like, Not really? Yeah, like she didn't. Yeah, she wasn't on board for going forward in the first place. That's why she was demanding control of the Hollow. But like, then she is there and is part of the group. So it's not like she suddenly isn't the same like rank that she is i don't know i just it feels to me like she should still be leading but yeah i see what you mean like still using like her skills skill set and like being a little bit more strategic in it i get yeah. that just I get being that. like this is what we're gonna do okay now mm-hmm. i've accepted it so let me lead us to go do that thing sure well just you know, she's not all that great of a character, so I mean, maybe that's why. <laughs> oh. Okay. <Yeah. laughs> you opened up a can of worms here. Uh, your I knew with you would really like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. <laughs> um. I don't really have notes for this chapter because a lot of stuff just kind of happens, to be honest. I don't have any notes to, like, the last page, so. I mean, that's a lot of Mockingjay part two in this, I guess, in since is that, like, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot that goes on, but we don't have really a lot of notes to it because so much goes on. Then they're announced dead, I guess. That's something big that happens. Which oh, I, is I kind of boring it. in comparison to what happens in the movie, I have to say. <laughs> no, like, it is. I love how they incorporated Snow and Coin and like both of them, seeing them almost kind of interact in yeah, a way. I mean, it's, it's mentioned in the book that like Snow is going to speak soon, but you don't hear that or read that speech that he gives. So it it's so much better to just kind of see him speak and then Coin interrupt and be like, um, excuse me. I just love Coin like almost crying and like <laughs> acting, you know. <laughs> it's iconic. And again, I guess this is kind of close to the last page, but again, they mention about like the capital having like their capacity for hovercrafts um, oh yeah which is again like trying to establish the fact that the capital doesn't have a lot of hovercrafts for what happens later on in the book mm, True. Good point. Uh, dun, dun, dun. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i like that mm-hmm. it's the second time that they've done that oh true Look at you. I've never <laughs> never noticed that. Yeah. I haven't mean, either. I'm just good like that. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Truly though. And then it's like the whole end of the chapter where Peter wakes up and is like, kill me. <laughs> He's like, kill me, please. I, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. And I'm just like, and just like Peter, shut up. Like, just shut <laughs> up. Which Stop I talking. I recently watched the <laughs> I recently watched the first Hunger Games movie, and at the end of it, I forgot. But he was like in the arena, 
before they take the Nightlock. Peter's like, no, kill me, Katniss. You need to go back. And then reading this, I'm like, oh, he does not ever change. <laughs> oh, you may have gone hijacked Peter. with nothing changed. <laughs> right, right. right. Then I kill see, me oh. first. <laughs> What a little bo- soft boy. Oh, I want to hug him. I want to hug him so badly. <laughs> <laughs> I love how he says it directly to Gail, too. He's like, I, I yeah, know Gail- you're going to support right. this. Like, yeah. Gail's, yeah. Gail's, being, Gail's being a little SHIT in this chapter. I, I can't. <laughs> True. I, I just, I, I, I've glossed over it because I don't want to get on the tangent, but like, I just shut up. Just shut up, Gail. <laughs> Damn you, Gail. <laughs> uh, but he's, yeah, he says it to Gail because he knows Gail will do something about it. Like, yep. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't actually think Katniss would kill him. Which, do you all think that she would? No. I don't think so. I don't think so. No. I mean, by the way that she fails to kill Gail, also, yeah. when he specifically asked for that and that was like kind of the pact that they made no spoiler alert yeah. <laughs> <laughs> prim dies <laughs> what? Uh, wait so does finnick what? Oh. oh my gosh guys i haven't read the book yet <laughs> <laughs> so this is a spoiler free podcast welcome <laughs> I'm I'm very excited to read on though because like this it, it just starts getting more and more insane oh, from mm-hmm. here on out like absolutely there's so much I'm glad that I get to talk to you guys about this because I've never talked about the rest of this book with anybody before yeah, just I'm excited twice. to get to that like yeah. what I remember yeah. just, the, it, the floor falling out it, like, it, it's, insane. <laughs> it's insane it's absolutely insane mm-hmm. I mean when I mean, since we've acknowledged that this is a spoiler-free podcast, when Prim dies in the book, um, <laughs> it's th- when she, the way that it was written was like, I thought that she drowned. <laughs> like, I thought that there was just like some big wave, but it, that was just what? because Katniss, it was, it was, no, because like how she wrote it, she was like, there was a, a big wave that like washed over me, blah blah. blah. No. I mean, she's talking about her grief or like the, the wave the of explosion, despair, Ronnie, or like the explosion or whatever. And I was just like, listen, I was like thirteen before all of you all read this book. Um, when I read this part, and I was like, what's going on here? What's happening? And even out of this day, I'm still confused, even though I know what's going on. But still, I want to talk about it with y'all. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. that part. Like, it's I'm so, good. so better that they didn't like even try to like uh, adapt that into the movie. <laughs> they were like, nope. I mean, I just, I just want Katniss like alone in a room, peeling her skin off for weeks on end. That's all I want. Because mm-hmm. that part is so good. That's my favorite part in the Katniss Chronicles. Um, after Ooh. she. Spoiler alert, assassinate Snow. Um, it's when she assassinates Snow in the Katniss Chronicles and when Prim passes, um, both those parts where she like wakes up in the hospital, then like is isolated. So good. And I wish they would have done those in the movies, but it's so quick. Yeah, they should have given it more time. They should have. But we'll read on. We'll see what happens. Yeah, stay tuned for next week. <laughs> Chapters 21 and 22. Woo-hoo. It'll a, be so good. Hopefully some more ballad news. Maybe not, but... Give us a new hopefully. TikTok. Something <laughs> new. <laughs> like, we, we dissect that. We even talk about the texture of the walls. Wow. <laughs> 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 Who ordered this pig? <laughs> who ordered this pig? Hey, hey, who ordered this pig? Where's soundboard? Uh, I don't have it with me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm the soundboard. <laughs> but but the second part of that line is like, do you have some pig yet? Really? I've never heard that. Yes. 
Yes, if you, if you like listen, they're like, hey, hey, who ordered this pig? And they're all yelling. And then he's like, do you have some pig? Or like, do you have some pig yet? <laughs> it's, it's very much improv. So, <laughs> so bad. They love so it. It's, bad. it's so very much. bad. It's a good line. Uh, it's <laughs> cinema. Excuse me. I mean, I do think that Seneca <laughs> ordered that that pig. I think he was just kind of showing off. Oh, 100%. But... <laughs> I'm just very much showing off. Who ordered me this pig? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Does anyone else have anything to add, I guess, as we close out tonight? Or is this it for Tribute Talk? Until very next exci- week. I'm just very excited for this movie. For this freaking movie. Oh, right. Let's hope we get some promo soon. <laughs> Soon, just to surprise something, something, okay, character posters. posters. Literally, yeah. a, t- a a picture Please. of a desk. I would just, I would go off. I'd be so <laughs> like excited. <a> chair. <laughs> like literally, I'd like, I would just be so happy with that. Please, just give me anything. I'm starving. Same. <laughs> That's why they call it the Hunger Games. <laughs> 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 Oh. sweet i guess if that's it um yeah join us for next week <laughs> we're gonna be reading some more mockingjay and fingers crossed everyone put it out in the universe that so we'll have something more valid to talk about next week so yes yes until then everyone have a great week good night we need, we need like 